Good morning, everyone. Grace and peace be with you all on this lovely day that the Lord has made. Happy Palm Sunday. Happy Holy Week. We are entering into that time uh, today. I want to let all of you know that those of you who are on Zoom are saying good morning, um, and those who are on Facebook or saying good morning. I just wanted to put that out there that we are here together through two different platforms. And I'm very grateful for both of the platforms we were able to have where I can see faces and I can see names uh, that we are together in this space. I wanted to acknowledge that as we enter into our worship this morning. For those of you who may not know, I am Pastor Amanda, and I welcome you into our worship through Prescott Valley United Methodist Church. No matter where you have been, and no matter where you are on your faith journey, I welcome you with an open mind, an open heart, and open arms into this time where we encounter and respond to God in community. Welcome. Uh, before I lead us in a prayer and a meditation, I am going to begin with one logistic reminder and a few announcements. Well, it might come across as more than a few announcements, uh, but the logistic item or, or the logistic reminder is to help us be aware of what we offer during this time of live worship. We continue to have live worship with the intent of making room for us to engage with one another in greeting, prayer, and other things, comments, and questions. Uh, even those who aren't live with us this morning are invited to engage through Facebook and YouTube at a later time. Because these services are not only live, but accessible through these open platforms of YouTube and Facebook, I want to continue inviting us to set an intention with each other. When offering a prayer, please avoid using sensitive information. This means no last names and no specific locations. Uh, you will notice that I will omit some, some things um, in, that are a part of the prayer request as a whole, uh, primarily to recognize the open platform. Uh, but not only that, uh, they will be added into our prayer warriors requests, which are to a small group of people who uh, we have shared with our church and they offer their prayers up before God. So if you wanted to provide specific information, you are welcome to do so by uh, reaching out to me personally or reaching out to the church office. But for this time, I invite you to avoid using last names and specific locations. We are on an open platform. Um, I think that is all I have to say about that. Uh, that being said, I'm going to move into our announcements. I do have quite a few, but I'm going to uh, condense them for the hopes of, of not prolonging this time and throwing too much information our way. Uh, I do wanna continue to say that I have in-person suspension updates, uh, I, but I want to avoid spending too much time on this. However, uh, this is because I know that I would end up sharing a bunch of information and will overload all of us as we enter into this time together. For this reason, I'm going to refer you to our updates. If you are not receiving those and or if you have any questions, please contact me or our church office at our Prescott Valley UMC at gmail.com email or Prescott Valley UMC pastor at gmail.com, or you can call the church office or uh, my number, which I don't disclose on an open platform, but uh, you are welcome to reach out to me or the office if you have any questions uh, or if you haven't been receiving our updates. Uh, we are moving forward, especially when it, in regards to our in-person suspension. We have plans set in motion, and I am personally excited uh, to see the day when we are able to come back in person, uh, but I will We'll be sharing those, that information exclusively in the updates. Our, I will, or our church will release more information in the weeks to come uh, about how our online worship is going to change a bit in the coming weeks. So if you are joining exclusively online, I will make sure to address any changes happening with that. Uh, you are always welcome to reach out to me with any questions, as I said. Uh, my next announcement 
just <laughs> to move on, has to do with this upcoming week or this week. It is Holy Week. As I said, uh, we have a few things happening and a few changes to our schedule. But before I get to that, uh, I want to express how grateful, how extremely grateful I am for all of the wonderful people that made it possible for us to share our 2021 Easter bags with our church family in the local area. I especially want to thank our anonymous donor for uh, within our church for many of the items that we were able to put in the bags, including the bags themselves, and all of the minds, hands, and hearts that made it possible for us to put this together and share it with our community. Um, I will be a addressing this in our updates or even just in, in, in days to come about how grateful I am for everyone who participated and being able to um, share the Easter bags with our church family. However, I wanted to verbalize it in this space. <laughs> I wanted to say thank you. Um, I do see some faces that have definitely helped out and I want to say Thank you. Um, it really was a joy to be able to share this. You could ask Linda, I was jumping around like, I'm so excited. <laughs> uh, so that being said, I'm going to move on to actual things happening this week. Um, I actually have a few things to mention in regard to this week. And the first is the shift in our Tuesday and Thursday plans or our scheduling. Uh, for those of you who have been joining in our study, the ministry moments uh, on Tuesdays via Zoom, we have shifted the study sessions again. I know that I said I wouldn't do this, uh, but after speaking with a group this past Tuesday, it was has been postponed for the sake of Holy Week and other celebrations. The study will resume next week on Tuesday at 1030, so we won't have a study this week. Uh, I will send out the resources for that uh, upcoming study, so not this week, but the next week, I will send out the resources closer to that date so it's fresh and, and um, easily accessible in our emails or however we receive it. Uh, for those of you who have reached out to me about receiving materials, the resources that have helped uh, facilitate our discussions, I will be compiling that at the close of the study and sharing it with you. So it will be made available to our church family. Uh, I know that not everyone has accessibility to Zoom, um, which is why I will be sharing that um, at, the end of the, at the end of the study. So it's more uh, formed uh, for those of you who would like that. In regard to the study postponement, the same goes for the fellowship and prayer that takes place on Thursdays. So we won't have fellowship and prayer this Thursday, but we will be picking it up the next Thursday. Apart from our study and our fellowship and prayer, um, there will be several things or several times uh, where you will be able to join me in a drive up communion opportunity this week. Well, it's actually two times. Uh, you are invited to drive up to the sanctuary doors where I will stand with two masks, uh, some gloves and a sanitized tray with a sanitized communion cup of juice and a wafer. Uh, you will be invited to stay in your cars and I will invite you to pray with me and I'll pray with you uh, to offer the communion uh, during that time. The communion opportunities are happening today uh, at 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. And then on Thursday, which is Monday slash Holy Thursday at 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. They're only our intervals. Uh, and I do realize that might, that might not be enough time for a lot of people, which is why I'm having two options. Uh, and I had one yesterday as well. So I do want to make sure that you all know that Monday Thursday's uh, communion prayer or communion gathering will be different than what will be offered today, primarily because it is Monday slash Holy Thursday. Uh, so it will be tailored toward that, uh, uh, that celebration. Um, an online service will also be made available through our YouTube channel. It will premiere on YouTube at 3 p.m. and will be available after that as well. And this is on Thursday for Maundy Thursday. The Thursday service will not be streamed live onto Zoom uh, to accommodate the communion drive up that day. But we will have a special Good Friday service that will also be offered or premiered through our church YouTube channel 
as well as streamed onto Zoom. So we are going to stream onto Zoom for Good Friday, but not Maundy Thursday. The services will not be live as they are on Sunday morning, but they will be compiled with a bunch of uh, different things that I'm actually really excited about. So I just want to invite you uh, to join me in those celebrations or those um, seasonal acknowledgements this coming week. Okay. I just breeze through a bunch of information. Uh, if any of you have any questions, please write them in the chat or reach out to me personally sometime this week. And I would love to address your questions. I won't be addressing them during our time today, but that doesn't mean that I'm not willing to answer anything that you have uh, to offer. <laughs> that being said, why don't we settle into our space uh, with a breath and body prayer this morning? After we settle into our prayer this morning, um, I wanted to let you know that our opening prayer following us settling in is actually written by a pastor named Julia. I don't know her full name, but I wanted to share that with you because it was a very moving prayer that I wanted to offer this Palm Sunday. That being said, um, I would now like to lead us by inviting you to close your eyes. I invite you to close your eyes and get into a comfortable position in your spaces, hands in your lap to your side, both feet on the ground. Sit in a way that makes you feel the most comfortable and grounded in your space this morning. And let us begin with a deep breath, as deep as we are able to take. One more time, <laughs> a deep breath. Now notice your body. How is your body feeling this morning? Is it aching? Is it rested? Is your body feeling antsy? Sluggish? How is your body carrying you into this day? How is it affecting the way you enter into this time? Pay attention. Now notice your senses. While not all of them are in use at this particular moment, what do you hear, taste, smell, touch, see? What is helping you focus and what is distracting you? What is helping you focus and what is distracting you? Now I want you to pay attention. How is it with your soul? How is it with your soul? Are you anxious? Are you relieved? Upset? Content? Are you feeling impatient? Are you calm? Are you overwhelmed? <laughs> or do you feel like you are in control? As you acknowledge your body, your surroundings, and how you are feeling in your soul, take a breath. Do your best to focus on your breathing now. Is it hard? Is it easy?
breathe in this moment and breathe out everything keeping you from being fully present. Breathe in this moment and breathe out everything keeping you from being fully present. May these words be our prayer. Holy God, you have fed us all out of your own generous and gracious hands. From them, we have received welcome, nourishment, hope, and consolation. May these things grow in us alongside the gift of faith so that we may plant their seeds in the world around us. Through the Holy Spirit, guide us in the days ahead to remember our place in your great and ongoing story of resurrection, redemption, and restoration through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 I'm going to now invite us into our ministry moment for this morning. We are closing our Lenten season with Holy Week. As I mentioned earlier, uh, we celebrate Palm Sunday today. And in the light of this Palm Sunday, I wanted to invite you into our last ministry moment meditation of the season. Uh, when speaking about ministry, we often recognize that there are so many, so many opportunities for us all to enter into faithful action. We spend time in ministry moments to acknowledge the impacts of ministry and highlight where we can support these ministries both directly and indirectly. Much of these conversations are about how God has met us on the journey to be the hands and feet for God's love to be known. It is our living witness, so to speak. With that being said, I want to invite you with my last question of the season, uh, at least for the ministry moments, my last question of the season um, to close with a meditation by reflecting on the passions within our very lives. I invite you to sit silently and reflect, to share with someone who may or may not be with you, uh, and to share your reflections in the chat or comment section on Facebook and or Zoom. As I have mentioned in previous weeks, I am not going to actively address what is mentioned in the chat section, uh, and this, this has more to do with time and my respect for yours. Uh, that being said, you are still welcome to share in the chats. I know I would love to see where you stand. Uh, this is a brief time, so if something comes to mind, you can offer it in the space uh, when it comes to your thoughts, uh, or you can just sit silently, as I said. Uh, the questions for today that I'm going to be asking are inspired by a quote by Howard Thurman, uh, which states, don't ask what the world needs. Ask yourself what makes you come alive and go do that. Because what the world needs is people who have come alive. His quote is, don't ask what the world needs. Ask yourself what makes you come alive and go do that. Because what the world needs is people who have come alive. Our questions for today in response to this quote by Howard Thurman are, what makes you come alive? Do you feel God nudging you through a passion of yours? If so, what is it? I'll repeat that for those who are joining by phone. I believe we have, oh, a couple people joining by phone. The questions are, what makes you come alive? 
Do you feel God nudging you through a passion of yours? If so, what is it? I'm going to now put the words up on the screen for a few minutes before I invite us into a reflection upon scripture. Our scripture reading for this morning is taken from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 11, verses 7 through 11, read from the New Revised Standard Version. Let us reflect upon scripture together. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Let us join together in response. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? Almighty God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. 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 This past week, I have been reflecting 
a lot about Holy Week in preparation for what is to come in discussion with the traditions that we have surrounding Holy Week, including Palm Sunday, uh, Holy Thursday, Good Friday, Sunday for Easter. Uh, and this past week, one of the things that really kept renewing itself in, its, in my mind was the idea that the church really is the body of Christ. The church really is the body of Christ. Uh, we talk about the church being the hands and feet of Christ, but it can go much deeper than this. For many, the people, the church, will be the only Jesus anyone sees. That's something that came to mind. The church will be the only Jesus that anyone sees. I was reminded of this truth this past week, and I even spoke about it with some of you. Uh, as much as we have scripture, yes, very abundantly rich, inspired word of God, as much as we have stories that not only live within scripture, but within our personal experience, no matter how much we have of those, the only Jesus anyone may see is found in you and in me. It's kind of hard to think about that. It, this becomes daunting when we become aware of ourselves, but it is also a beautiful chance for us to figure out what this means for us. Especially as we enter into Holy Week with Jesus, entering into Jerusalem. So let's re-enter this narrative again. On this Palm Sunday, or on Palm Sunday, we carry the story of a triumphant entry with us. We walk alongside each other, and Jesus, as he walks closer to the last days of his own life, before he is risen again for new life to come. I must admit how difficult it can be to grasp some of these stories, but it is also a witness to the miraculous story of Jesus that continues to touch the lives of people everywhere. And we begin here this Holy Week on Palm Sunday. After many years of living in this world and in ministry, Jesus, our very own God with us, enters Jerusalem in triumph. He enters Jerusalem in triumph. We can often view this through the eyes of a false triumph because it is leading to the cross. And that's actually what we talked about last year. Uh, the rejoicing would so soon turn to mourning uh, for the overzealous response to Jesus was not well received by the leaders, not to mention the intention behind the cross. But there is something powerful about the actions of the people in our story today and how God continues to surprise us and enliven our spirits. The people are elated, elated at the fact that Jesus was entering into Jerusalem. Garments were being laid down, palms were being waved in the air, and Hosanna was being shouted. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. That is a part of our liturgy, and it comes from scripture. It comes from these narratives. The people were rejoicing and literally yelling, save me, save now, which is what Hosanna means. And not only that, but they were waving a symbol of victory in their hands, which is the palm. For those of you who have the palm, uh, we can hold on to it now. I mean, I have a bunch right here. I'm not going to fold it this this uh, this year, uh, but we hold on to these palms for a reason. They're a symbol of victory, right? But not only that, uh, it also you could also turn this into, and it fell, a cross. We. Uh, I demonstrated this last year. I actually folded it before everyone. 
but the palms, we take this victory and we fold it into a cross, recognizing that how this victory was turned into shame and how even in that shame, Christ led us to victory again. It's all within that. We hold the palm branches in our hands for many reasons. And with this, our Palm Sunday becomes rooted in this tradition through many forms of symbolism that allows us to enter into the season of Lent and Holy Week of Easter, knowing that God had surprised us in the way that he embod was embodied in the person of Jesus Christ and led us to victory, to shame, back to victory again. The palms from Palm Sunday are even often burned to be used for the ashes for the next Ash Wednesday. The palms we carry are also turned into crosses, as I said, for us to bear witness to the power of God to turn this victory to shame, to victory again. And I say this on repeat because it is like that. We often, we always actually not even often we always re-enter these seasons of lent and holy week and easter acknowledging the weight of this as a part of our journey it's cyclical it moves right back around and it all connects to one another and our relationship with god now we recognize this powerful aspect of our faith but i am drawn back to this idea that we become Jesus for other people when we celebrate these stories, when we celebrate Christ's life. We don't become a passive audience. We become the people of God, rejoicing and witnessing to who God is, who God became in Jesus Christ, and how God continues to empower us in this world through the Holy Spirit that becomes like the air we breathe. And this year, I was struck by the people who were waving the branches and laying the garments. I was struck by the way the people received Jesus in our story today. And it made me think, what would it mean for us to invite Christ into our hearts with the same enthusiasm as the people did when he entered Jerusalem? What would it mean for us to invite Christ into our hearts with the same enthusiasm as the people did when they were entering, when he was entering Jerusalem. As I said, these people met Jesus with joy and it was infiltrated throughout the crowd. They knew who Jesus was and that became a source of not only rejoicing, but a witness. How do we carry this into our Holy Week was my thought. How do we embody the message of Christ, the way that Christ embodied who God is. I ask this question because if we aren't able to join in the wonder and receive Christ to the fullest, how can we expect to be able to share it? If we aren't able to join in the wonder and receive Christ, how can we ever expect to share it? There are so many things that I've actually written down for us to, to think about as we close, but what I really wanted us to lean into this Palm Sunday as we enter into Holy Week is this idea of victory, this idea of shame, this idea of victory again, and what that means for us in our lives, because we are Easter people. But, these, but as Easter people, we are also a part of that journey. We are part of the journey that makes us a part of the body. And we share that with one another. What does it mean for you to accept Jesus in your life? As we prepare for Easter, who is Jesus to you? Who is God to you? And why do you think it is so important for us to invest in that? I want to invite you to continue your reflections with me with our message in music, which is, please enter my heart, Hosanna. i 
now join together in a time where we offer our joys, our concerns, our prayers, and our petitions into this space. You are invited to do so with the direction upon the screen. Let us join together in a preparation for prayer.
Okay. We are now going to move into the time where we actually share the prayers that are offered into this space. I will let you know how we are going to do that. Uh, prior to my sharing of the prayers that were sent to me earlier this week, I will check to see if there are any verbal prayers that you would like to offer into this space uh, through Zoom. Uh, following that, I will move into the prayers that were shared with me earlier this week. And then I will move into the prayers offered through the chat section on Zoom and then the comment section on Facebook. Uh, after every response, I want to invite you, or I mean, after every prayer, after every joy petition, I want to invite you into a response. I was thinking ahead of myself. <laughs> Uh, the response is, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers, and you are invited to join with me at any point in that response. That being said, I'm going to check if there are any verbal prayer requests. If you have your video on, just raise your hand. And if you don't have your video on but would like to speak, uh, I would invite you to type that into the chat section, just like speak or just something to let me know that you wanted to share something or a prayer or petition praise. Uh, that being said, I'm going to check if there are any verbal prayer requests with hands raised. Okay. Okay. Then I'm going to move on to the prayers that were shared with me earlier this week, or even just prior to this service started through Zoom. Uh, the first request that I have is actually one that I just saw Jeannie uh, put up, was for Roger F., who is a church family member. Uh, he is currently in the hospital uh, in the ER for tests yesterday on his legs. Uh, let us hold Roger F. in our prayers uh, for these, even just the hours to come, um, so that the doctors can find some semblance of, of clarity as to what's call it causing um, some of the difficulties in his legs. So let, let us lift this before God in prayer for Roger. Let us join in response saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Yes. Uh, we have a prayer of thanksgiving and gratefulness offered by Anita W. Anita's surgery on Thursday went well. She is home um, and she thanks everyone for the prayers and all of the cards. Um, I would like to lift this as a joy before God in response saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We had a request shared for, uh, from Anita W. for Ross W., her son, who has wrist surgery tomorrow. Uh, let us hold Ross in our prayers uh, as he prepares for that surgery tomorrow. Would you join me in response saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We have one more prayer request offered by Anita W. for Jen and the health problems that are in her family. Uh, so prayers for Jen and her entire family as they have health problems. And I'm going to invite you to lift this before God in response saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Now I'm going to share a couple of prayers that were shared just prior to the service through Zoom. Uh, the first is a prayer update of a joy, but also continued prayers for Cindy G's, I was about to say her last name, Cindy G's uh, brother, Ron, who is now home, um, but it could always use extra prayers as some things are coming up and um, just prayers for Ron and Cindy, who is actually still there with him in South Dakota. I was looking at Larry to make sure I got it correct. I'm always saying like, I always want to say South Carolina or something like that. There's, it's South Dakota. Let us hold Ron, Cindy, and their entire family in our prayers, uh, lifting this before God in response, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We have a prayer request offered by Norma and Vern. Um, oh, I wanted to say your full last name, H. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm, I'm glad I'm catching myself before I'm saying full names. Uh, but this prayer is offered by Norma and Vern H. They shared this just prior to our service. It is just a prayer for uh, very dear friends of them. There's Marlene and Sandy uh, for travel mercies. Let us hold Marlene and Sandy in our prayers and even the hours to come, the days to come. Um, let us lift this before God in response, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. I'm now going to check actually one more time to see if there are any verbal or prayer requests or any um, alterations to some of the prayers that I might have mentioned. <laughs> Oh, I see you're holding your, your palm cross, uh, Carol. Are you holding that up to say something or? Oh, okay. I very much love that. <laughs> if you have your palm and it's not uh, folded yet, I was gonna invite you to, to do that at the end, possibly. <laughs> as we prepare to close. But if there are no other verbal repair requests, I'm gonna move on to those that are mentioned in the chat. Okay, uh, the first is offered by Linda and Michael M. Uh, play, uh, this is what the request says. It says, please pray for our friends, Marty and Charlie, as Charlie struggles with some heart issues. Yes, let us hold Marty and Charlie in our prayers and lift this before God in response saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And then we have a prayer request. I'm gonna say this is a prayer of Thanksgiving as well as continued prayers offered by Sharon and Mike P. And I'm gonna read it as it is written. Tomorrow, March 29th is National Vietnam War Veterans Day. Many of us are of the generation that was directly touched by this. Prayers of thanksgiving for those who came home and prayers for those who gave the ultimate sacrifice. Yes, let us keep all of those who are affected uh, by the Vietnam War, all of those who served and continue to have that experience and share that with all of us. Um, let us lift this as a prayer of thanksgiving and continued prayers uh, for all of those who have been heavily impacted by the Vietnam War and lifting this before God. In response, I invite you to say, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Thank you for that. And then I already shared the prayer request for Roger. Thank you. Now I'm going to move on to the requests or praises offered through Facebook. I'm going to reopen this just to make sure I'm not missing any. Okay. It looks like we have one prayer request offered by Dan and Doris N uh, for their nephew, James, who has a stress fracture in his back. Uh, please continued prayers. Yes, this, this was uh, a prayer we offered, I believe either last week or the week before uh, for James who has been having some, some serious back issues. Let us continue to hold James in our prayers for the days to come as we lift this before God in response, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Okay, if there are no other prayer requests, I'm going to invite you to join me in prayer. Today's uh, prayer is actually offered by a man named John Vest. I was very much uh, impacted by a couple of prayers, as you might notice, where I'm not actually praying prayers that I've written myself, but were offered and written by someone else. And I felt this was a very beautiful prayer, and I want to invite you to join me in it. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, in the journey of life, you are our guide and our companion. From our beginning to our end, you are there. You run this race alongside us, at times encouraging us, at times comforting us, at times tending to our wounds, at times carrying us when we don't think we can take another step. For six weeks, we have been on a Lenten journey and you have been right here with us. 
with us in our discipline and devotion, with us in our weakness and failure, with us in our fear, with us in our hope. As we spend this final week with Jesus in Jerusalem, we are amazed once again by his gentle spirit and fierce determination. As he confronts those who challenge him, he confronts our own stubbornness and defiant wills. As he cares even for those who hate him, we are challenged to love as he loves. As he bears witness to the emergence of your kingdom, our eyes are opened to your presence all around us. As he moves with resolve toward his dark destiny, we find ourselves struggling to understand why it has to be this way. Great God, the journey is not just about the destination. It is about each step along the way. The journey itself is a blessing with all of its joys and sorrows. As we run this race, you are shaping us into new people. As we move with you, we are continually born anew. Help us to be attentive to each step in the darkness and in the light. Help us to fully experience all that we encounter, the good and the bad, for in it all we discover you. Though the race of life goes on, our Lenten journey is nearing its closure. Bind us even closer to Christ so that we may turn our hearts and minds to all that he experienced in the crucible of this holy week, a week both terrible and wonderful. Hear us even now as we join our voices to his, saying together the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. 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 I want to thank you all for joining me on this lovely Palm Sunday. Uh, before I close, I want to let you know uh, that we are going to have the benediction followed by our song of farewell, which we are bringing back, bind us together. And I'll invite you to that, to join me in that. Following that, there will be a picture popped up on the screen that says, may the Lord bless and keep you. After that video has finished, I will end the live stream uh, waving to everyone on Facebook and through Zoom. Um, that being said, I'm going to end with a benediction. If you have your palms, I'm going to invite you to hold them up with me. In a sign of victory, in a sign of preparation for what this week will, come, will bring, I have a few palms. I'll hold up one. <laughs> I'm not going to invite you to fold them in a cross. It might take a little bit longer, but I hope that we can wave our palm branches in recognition of the victory which we, which we hold in ourselves. May we carry this symbol of victory into our week and remember who God is, who God became for us, and how we meet God amidst it all, even now. That is my blessing to you. May the Lord bless and keep you. Let us join together in our song of farewell. If you would like to lift up your palm branches and continue to wave them in the air as we sing, you are welcome to do so. I probably will, uh, and everyone will see me because I'm not going to turn off my video as we sing. <laughs> Let us join together in our song of farewell. <laughs>